In this video, I'm going to be sharing my top five favorite horse breeds. So before we get started, be sure to comment down below. I want to know your favorite breeds and why you like them. My fifth favorite horse breed is the Appaloosa. I think everyone here probably knows what an Appaloosa is. You've probably known them for their beautiful spotted coats and their spotted blankets that they have. They also have like leopard spots across their body and they can look a bunch of different ways. Two other physical traits that I like about the Appaloosas are their mottled skin. So they'll have like a mottled skin around, around their muzzles and their eyes and this means their skin just looks kind of polka dotted as well. And I also like the white sclera of their eye, like you can kind of see that and I know a lot of people don't actually like that but I just think it adds character and it makes them a lot more expressive. I feel like I have a lot of experience with Appaloosas, not only because of my horse Tucker, but also just growing up and being in lesson programs. Appaloosas are pretty common horses and so you do come across them a lot. We don't know Tucker's exact breeding. He can be categorized as an Appaloosa or as a POA. He can foundationally be any of those horses. The Appaloosas originated from the Native American tribes in West. America. And that's where the first spotted horses were seen and from there it's become like this really common and popular breed across America. My top reason for liking these horses other than they're absolutely beautiful but they are also very intelligent. I would go to say that I think Appaloosas are probably like the smartest horses out there. They all seem to have an incredible sense of self-preservation and I can say that for Tucker as well like out of all the horses I've ever had he is the one that I think is the smartest and can figure things out most quickly and is able to also think through situations and like comprehend what's going on. He is just incredibly smart. The other reason I love Appaloosas is that they are extremely versatile. Like you can do anything with them. Like I've seen Appaloosas in the Western disciplines, in cow sorting and things like that. I've seen Appaloosas in eventing and they usually are great at it. And I've also seen Appaloosas, you know, show jumping, um, endurance rides. I know that they do pretty well in endurance as well. And just taking Tucker out on the trails and seeing that. So while I love everything about Appaloosas, I've heard the saying where it says, sometimes your greatest strength can also be your greatest weakness. And I think that Appaloosas can get a rap for being kind of stubborn, but I think that comes from their intelligence and just from being smart and being able to like reason things out more than other horses. Maybe that's why they're more stubborn. Another downside to why some people may not like Appaloosas is some people just don't like the mottled look of the skin or the white sclera. They think that it looks kind of weird. Another downside to Appaloosas is that they are very commonly known for getting recurrent uveitis in their life, which is like an eye disease. It's pretty interesting because I think it's more of a genetic thing where if they have the leopard complex gene, which gives them that spotted pattern on their coat, along with that gene also comes recurrent uveitis. And so that's just something to remember if you are looking at Appaloosas, um, it is a higher chance that they may deal with that in their life. My fourth favorite horse breed is the Norwegian Fjord horse. These horses come from Norway, of course, and they're most known for their dun coat coloring and also their mohawk mane that is black and white. And I think these are the coolest horses out there. The reason I personally love this breed is because I love small draft horses. That is my jam. This whole list could have been made up of small draft horses, um, but I was like, okay, I'll just pick one to kind of represent them all. I like field horses because they are a little bit more rare in America. You don't see a whole lot of them but I have had the opportunity and the pleasure to ride one. Um, growing up, we had one in for training and he was amazing and I loved riding him. He was the most fun horse ever. He fox hunted, he was amazing at dressage, he could jump, so he was very versatile and I think the whole breed is pretty versatile. I also like the small draft horses because they just make you feel so much more secure on them. Just the way they're built, you feel like you are on a sturdy horse and it just feels a lot safer and a lot more comfortable. I also like that the Fjord horses have the signature look with that mane. Uh, they're very easy to spot. I also think they're cool because you can see them in lesson programs and they can be great kids horses, but then, you know, an adult can ride them and you know, you can do some pretty cool stuff with a Fjord horse and dressage and eventing and you can compete. So they're very versatile in terms of across the range of ages. Some downsides to the Fjords, number one, they are gonna be more expensive. 
because in America they are pretty rare and so it's going to be difficult to find one for a more reasonable price or if you're on a budget. Another thing is small draft horses like the Norwegian Fjord or Halflingers or things like that, they have a reputation of kind of being turds <laughs> on the ground. So they have really bad ground manners, they'll be pushy, they'll be nippy, um, and just things like that. And I've heard multiple people say that, and I have experienced that with these types of horses. Like the Fjord I rode growing up, he was amazing to ride, but on the ground he was awful. He was awful. He was always running you over and things like that. So that is just something to remember. But like I said, if they're using those horses in lesson programs, I don't think every single horse is like that, but they do have a reputation for being like that. My third favorite horse is kind of a newer one on my list that I didn't really consider or think about until I got my horse Ruach. But my third favorite horse breed is the Morgan horse. Morgan horses were made in America and they're one of the first horse breeds that were actually created here, like in the 1700s in New England. And they are known for being like a smaller breed, but very stocky and very strong. I've run across quite a few of these horses. Like growing up, they were in our lesson program and we had quite a few of them. Another amazing thing about Morgans, they always, all the ones I've known, have lived on for a very long time. And they were being in the lesson program when they were like 26 and carrying kids around. And then they lived on to be like 35. So I just feel like they have longevity. Another reason I personally love them that I didn't notice until I got Ruach and then I started kind of researching is that if you want a horse that moves like a Frisian horse, like with the high knees and just is very graceful and elegant, Morgan horses are like that. They just naturally do that. When we got Ruach, I was out in the field and I was just watching him trot across the field. And I was like, oh my goodness, he could be a little Frisian horse if he was all black instead of bay. But they are beautiful in that sense and they can be very regal looking. And the other thing is, like every breed that's been on this list so far, they can be very versatile. So they're known for being sturdy and strong and sure-footed horses, so they obviously make great trail horses. They are used in saddle seat a lot, and I think that's because of their high knee action. They're also very popular in English disciplines, like hunter under saddle and things like that, uh, just because they can carry themselves in that way and look graceful and elegant and things like that. Another interesting thing about Morgan horses is that some of them are naturally gated and some of them aren't. And so Ruach out here, I don't have much experience with gated horses. So I still need to like go to someone with experience and just show them how he moves because sometimes I'll see him out there and he is moving like a normal horse. But then sometimes I'll see him out there and he looks like he's ambling or gating or I don't even know what you would call it. So. I think that's something that's very unique about them. Some downsides to Morgans, I honestly don't think there are any. They're pretty popular, so you can find them, and they're gonna be more reasonably priced, more like a quarter horse pricing. They are strong, sturdy, sure-footed. They have longevity, so they're very healthy usually. They are known for being sweet and docile and calm, like everyone I've had a run-in with has been like that. So if you are looking for your first horse, I would highly recommend considering a Morgan horse. For my second favorite horse breed, y'all are probably gonna laugh at me, but it is the miniature horse. A miniature horse is basically a horse that is under, I think it has to be 34 inches or shorter. And the thing about miniature horses is that they have the same build as a normal horse and the same ratios, they're just smaller. So they're not a pony, they're actually a horse. And I'm laughing at myself now because I realized all the horse breeds I've picked are breeds that I personally have, and so that's probably why I like them right now. But anyway, I never really cared about miniature horses until I got my miniature horse Yoshi, and then I absolutely fell in love with them. I think they're the cutest thing. It's just nice having a little horse follow you around when you go out and you do barn chores and things like that. They're just cute. I mean, they're so cute and fluffy and squishy, and they seem a lot more friendly and not like a normal horse who's like, okay, pet me, okay, I'll go walk away now. They seem like they are dogs and they act like that too. And maybe that's just because they get spoiled and they get treats and things like that. It's also nice if you are not able to ride a horse because maybe you have an old injury or maybe you're just older or you don't know how to ride a horse or if you just don't have the space to keep a horse, a miniature horse is a great option. I think there's a lot of things you can do with them. You can still train them to do things. They can pull carts 
You can take them on walks. You can take them and visit nursing homes and things like that. People love miniature horses. Like, I will take Yoshi to schools and the students will just flock around him. So people love miniature horses. So I think if you got one, there's definitely stuff you could do with it, which is also what I like. I like having the option if I don't want to ride. You know, I can work with the horse in another way. Some downsides to miniature horses. While they are very cute and cuddly, they can become obese very quickly if their diet is not monitored. And so if you want a miniature horse, you need to make sure that you are willing to put in the time and effort to monitor your horse's diet and also have the area to where if the horse needs to go on a dry lot or like a lot of dirt that just doesn't have grass, you need to have that facility and be able to feed them. Number two, miniature horses are known for being quite stubborn, which I can attest that they can get like this. I think it's like a little man complex where they just feel like, you know, they have to Oh, seem tougher to get what they want or something. I do know a lot of miniature horses that are very sweet and you can pick up their feet and things like that. I think just in situations where they feel unsafe or uncomfortable, you know, you're gonna see that stubbornness come out a little bit more. Thirdly, I don't think people realize this. I think they think that miniature horses will be cheaper to keep than a normal horse, but in reality, they're not. They still need to see the farrier every eight weeks they're still going to need to have the vet out and get the normal vaccines that horses get and the normal care and their teeth floating and things like that in essence while you may not like pay as much to feed them for like grain and hay the time you're going to put into managing their diet is probably going to be considerable it's just like taking care of a big horse so that's something to keep in mind if you do want a miniature horse and now that we've had one i can't see myself not having one they're like a dog okay so i am to my spot one so i need a drum roll my ultimate favorite horse breed ever is the icelandic horse i did not fall in love with icelandic horses until i actually went to iceland and met them and saw them and rode them and ever since then, I cannot stop thinking about them. And the sad thing is, there's not a whole lot of them here in America and you don't run into them a lot. But my ultimate goal is to import Icelandic horses to America. I would love to do that at some point. There are so many reasons why I love these horses. I don't even know if I could fit all into this video, but number one, they are just so unique. I don't think people realize this. I think people just see them and they're just puffy and hairy and they're like, oh, that's just like a normal pony. But no, they're not like that. They are, number one, built for the environment. Iceland is called Iceland for a reason. The climate is harsh. So these horses are just rugged, hardcore, sure-footed animals that are just made to survive. Another unique thing about Icelandic horses is that they can move like a normal horse. Like they can walk, trot, canter, gallop, but then they can also move like a gated horse where they can pace. And then they have their own gait called a tolt. That in and of itself is amazing. And I love that. And I love that there are so many options. And I got to ride the tolt when I went to Iceland and it was very comfortable. The tolt allows Icelandic horses to move across a long distance without much effort. So that would make them great for endurance riding. Like if you want to do endurance riding, Icelandic horses may be the way to go. And the thing is, I think they're a lot more common in Europe and it's a lot cheaper to import them to Europe than it is to import them to America right now. I think I looked in America, it's right around like $6,000 just to get them into the country, like at the airport. I like that Icelandic horses are literally like the most colorful horse breed in the world. Like they can have any kind of coat pattern or coloring or mix. Like when we went to Iceland, there were Icelandic horses everywhere. And it was so cool because they all looked incredibly different from one another. And so I love the variety. I love that you'll see colors you will probably never see on any other horse. They're the only breed that can just be gray and they don't white out like normal gray horses. The last thing I love about Icelandic horses is that they have been bred very carefully. Like the Icelandic people are very intentional about their breeding and they're very intentional about breeding well-behaved horses and healthy horses. And so they've ended up producing this horse breed that is very healthy and also very calm and docile and easy to work with. And so I just think they're amazing. Like I said, I can't say enough about them. I have no bad things to say about the Icelandic horses. Anyway, those are my top five favorite horse breeds. Like I said, be sure to comment down below what horse breeds you like. And if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more weekly horse videos.